As a methodology, Generous Waste is an entry point to conversations around how people can imagine a decentralised and decolonised neighbourhood. Um, the material that I work with is mainly paper making from recycled materials such as single-use paper cups, envelopes, receipts, bills, etc. Any form of paper that you find, especially on the household level, I'm really happy to use and experiment with in terms of paper making. Um, I think recently I've started branching out of paper making and looking at paper sculptures, paper mache. Um, if you mix paper with clay, what happens to it? Um, yeah, I, I think more using paper as a material um, that can help to support the imagination. Um, in the sense of from this waste that's in your house, you can then begin to mould it and imagine a future where the waste is rather than being something to throw away, it's now something generous, it's now something that you can incorporate into a new future and it has a cycle that is very circular in the sense of you can make paper, you can break it back down again once you've used it, you can make something else and the cycle almost keeps going. So that's one of the key things about the, the methodology. And I'm really careful about calling it a practice because um, as, a, as a creative, my practice is not paper making. Um, my practice is based around creative activities and pursuits that allow you to enter into dialogue about what a future looks like that is decentralized and decolonized. A future that is that centers the needs of a neighborhood the unique needs of unique neighborhoods and a future that uses this knowledge production that is that is or data collection almost that is instigated by the neighborhood or the community that's most of that policy I don't know how to explain this so what we have is a lot of policy gets made um, and decisions get made for neighbourhoods that do not actually take into consideration how they see their needs and how they see that they need to shape their future. It's very much based upon data collection, etc., which is incredibly biased. It has a ulterior motive. And I suppose this is also, as a methodology, it's a way of saying to people, well, maybe we can actually take control of an aspect of our future and do something incredible with it. And almost use this as a case study, use it as a way of showing people that, yes, there's certain things that we can take, can take control of and do a bloody good job at. Um, Our time is one of turbulence. Our winds of destruction ever present, ever shape shifting from natural disasters of unnatural causes. To socio political racial facets of capitalism, our time is one of turbulence. A turbulence of waste, a turbulence of lack of, of scarcity, of information, of meaningless contextless data, of supply chains. Storms swept. Induced blindness of the turbulence is all consuming it might seem. Change dragged across the globe to supply needs manufactured by the turbulence shackling the earth. 
in ownership and the control of who might exclusively and viciously hew and commit pieces of her away into the storm until she is covered by gaping holes and sores and bruises and bloodless tracks. The turbulence rages within tornadoes of progress, of modernity, of convenience, spitting out the shells of what it consumed back into the gaping holes where Earth's flesh had once been hewn. Yeah, I want people to be able to imagine a new future and I want them to do it in a way that's magical in which they can really engage with this element and this mythic element of metamorphosis but I also want them to be able to imagine in a way that feels comfortable and feels accessible um, and so that's super important so not not forcing it to become something big or to become something on an industrial scale but maybe showing that something can be produced on a lo hyper local scale in a very practical way i'd love to be able to kind of have those explorations with the neighborhood and to see how that could be possible yeah it is a sheet look at it it's a sheet of paper shall we do it film it again with more light this time pause it can we make something other than paper he said out of the coffee cups and i was thrilled i said yes of course i'm so glad you're asking this question what do you want to make um he wanted to make briquettes that might fuel a neighborhood barbecue so that very Wednesday, I collected all the cups, the plates and the soup bowls from the community lunch, took them home and prepped them by soaking them, washing them and splitting the plastic away from them um, and brought them back that Saturday. And he brought his briquette maker and away we went to experiment. We managed to make about four or five little briquettes. And they dried really quickly because it, you know, the summer was really hot. And then they were they were displayed as part of another paper making workshop. And the neighbour came and saw them, and was absolutely fascinated by them. They said that imagine if we made even more of these and then we use it as a way for the neighborhood to explore building things building structures um, and then they started exploring how we might weatherproof it and saying that it didn't matter if it didn't work because we could just recycle it again you know so they were just suggesting all of these things that really engage with the circular and regenerative aspect of generous waste and I thought, well, this is amazing because sh this has come out of a persistent showing up in the neighborhood and making paper and just ignoring the fact that people see you and say, oh, you're making paper again. Um, because I think one of the ways that it can live in the human imagination is for it to be accessible, for it to be and also for it to be something that is persistently showing up within the space in a simple way that doesn't seem pro that that seems very proximate to your own reality